Good to see you again. Now, we've done close reading of the whole passage. Let's move on today to try something a bit different. Retelling the story in chronological order. Now, let's begin. Before we go further, I would like to make sure that everybody understands that to retell a story means to tell the most important parts of the story, from the beginning to the end. So, what are the most important parts of a story? The characters, the setting, and the big events which happened in the story from beginning, middle, and end should be the things you focus on. 那么，复述一个故事的关键呢？我们是要把重要内容讲述出来，包括这个故事中的人物、背景和开头、中间、结尾。发生的重大事件。那么本节课啊，我们就按照这个复述原则，按照故事发生的时间顺序把它讲出来。In chronological order， 按照时间前后顺序排列的。From the beginning to the end， let's go back to the story and find out something that is helpful。呃，同学们，我们今天呢，先来做个找朋友的游戏。那通过这个小游戏，我们穿一下本篇故事中一个重要的时间点事件，以及和它相关的信息。啊、uh, ，那大家现在看屏幕左边的陈述呢，在右边啊可以找到搭配的陈述对象。那么我们现在就找到他最喜欢的小伙伴吧。Ready? Here we go. OK, Nobel Prize. Should be linked to yes, a prize awarded to those who make great achievements for mankind. Okay, next one. To you, you should be linked to right, a Chinese scientist who developed a new cure. Okay, artemisinin should be linked to right, a new cure developed. By Chinese doctors, malaria should be linked to a kind of disease always caused by mosquitoes. The year of 1972 should be linked to when Chinese people knew how to cure the new disease. 太棒了！大家再次熟悉了一些重要的词汇，也回忆了本篇故事的梗概。All right. Now, can anyone help me remember the last question that I gave you in the last episode? 还记得上节课我给大家留的最后一道题吗 ？Yes. What happened to to you you in 1972, according to this story? 那根据这篇故事，那在一九七二年的时候，有屠呦呦。发生了一些事情跟屠呦呦相关的 ，right？ 现在我们尝试把刚才的五句话揉到一句里，就是这个问题的答案。那我们来看一下 ，the answer is also about the key event with which we're gonna start to retell the story today。那答案呢，也跟我们今天复述这个故事的中心事件有关。Okay, here it is. In 1972, a new cure for malaria called artemisinin was developed by Chu Yuyu, the first Chinese scientist who won the Nobel Prize. Good. Now we've got to know that in the year of 1972, Chu Yuyu found a new medicine called artemisinin. 首先啊。本故事中出现了很多的时间点，这对于我们记忆故事有很大的帮助。只要我们按照时间顺序发生的事情进行捋顺，就会把整个故事进行清晰的复述。其次呢，我们要找到比较有代表性的时间节点，比如高潮部分、事件的分水岭等等。那么本篇故事中。1972年，青蒿素被发现了
，这对于本篇故事来说是一个很重要的时间节点，所以我们今天就从1972年开始。So what happened before the year of 1972 and the year after? Let's find out. 那么之前和之后发生了什么呢？我们一起来看。我们先用最简单的词和短语把事件回忆一次，之后呢，大家进行拓展、补充细节，让这棵大树枝繁叶茂。From the beginning of the story, it said that it was in the 1960s that the old drug used for malaria began to lose effectiveness. Therefore. The disease malaria appeared again in some regions of the world, especially in Asian countries. 那么，一九六零年代，治疗疟疾的老药方啊，它失去药性，疟疾呢又开始泛滥。这里呢，交代了故事发生的背景。So, what happened in 1964? Here are some keywords for you. Breakthrough, Chinese herbs to look for. Okay, 同学们，重要的角色要出场了。我们在第二自然段找一下吧。Yes, China planned to look for a new drug for malaria. 中国决定开始研制治疗疟疾的新药方。However. There was no significant improvement until 1969, when Chu Yuyu joined a Chinese research team as the head of it to seek a drug for malaria from among thousands of Chinese herbs. 直到一九六九年啊，中国的研制一直没有太大的进展。屠呦呦决定带领团队从上千种的中草药里寻找药方。Brilliant. 那么大家看一下，按照时间顺序的整理图。那么， 1972年前的故事背景和发展脉络，我们基本都已经找到了。主人公已经出场。现在给大家一分钟时间，从书里找到这几个时间点的句子，并把原句画下来。大家把书拿出来。好 ，In the 1960s, 1964. And 1969. 好，从这三个时间点去开始进行寻找。Question time. How old was Chu Yu Yu when she began to search for the drug for malaria? Thirty-nine years old. Okay. Chu Yu Yu devoted her life to the new drug at the age of thirty-nine. Can you imagine what it will be like when you are thirty-nine? Tu Yu Yu 啊，开始投入青蒿素的研制时，三十九岁。你有没有想过，你三十九岁的时候生活会是什么样子呢 ？What I'm trying to say, it is never too late for you to start to pursue your dreams, as long as you. Turn your intentions into actions. 只要你行动起来，追求梦想永远不会太晚。Let's move to the events which happened after the year of 1972. With her team, Chu Yu Yu developed a medicine for malaria. However, the medicine hadn't yet been introduced to the whole world for various reasons. Finally. In the year of 1981, Chu Yu Yu gave a speech about the medicine called artemisinin at a meeting held by the WHO, 世界卫生组织 and the world began to know artemisinin. Bingo! Artemisinin was introduced to the whole world by WHO as the leading drug in 2000. Do you know that man who is sitting under the apple tree? 我想大家都知道，躺在苹果树下发现了万有引力的牛顿。牛顿呢，用万有引力定律帮助人们打开认识世界的大门。那么，屠呦呦
用青蒿素为人们认识世界保证了生命。From the year 2000 to 2015, the global ratio of death from malaria dropped by 60%. What a great thing to you has achieved for humankind. In 2015, to you won the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine at the age of 85. It took 46 years of efforts from the age of 39 to 85 for her to get the prize. But she never thought about giving up. How persistent she was! To you use the spirit of scientific research is a microcosm of that of Chinese scientists as a whole. To you use 这种科研探索不放弃的精神，其实是我们无数中国科学家们奋斗精神的缩影。See, 同学们。大家注意到，我们的时间树长大了。大家现在看，这更像什么呢？是不是更像一棵生命之树呢？生命的枝繁叶茂，要靠汗水、智慧和坚持的浇灌。正如书里告诉我们的 ：“If you don't give up easily in the face of difficulties, you may make progress and start to see.” A glimmer of starlight, as the scene goes, is always darkest just before the dawn. 在艰难的时候，不要轻易放弃。也许你再往前走，你就能看见点点星光，柳暗花明。Now, okay, I'd better leave you some time to try to retell the story in chronological order. Here, a tip for you. Keep asking questions about the character, the setting, and the big events in the beginning, middle, and the end of the story. And also bear in mind how significant the introduction of Artemisinin to the whole world was. 这就是按照时间轴进行故事复述。大家学会了吗？现在大家按照这个时间线的提示，我们把青蒿素的故事。讲起来吧。That's all for today's episode. We've learned some technical vocabulary related to medicine, some useful expressions, and how to retell the story in chronological order. I hope you learned some useful information about Chinese herbs, Chinese doctors, and the spirit of Chinese people, and you are able to tell the story to your foreign friends now. In the next episode, we're gonna find something behind the story. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.